So I've been a fan of longer lasers for a long time. I started with a 5 watt Ray 5 about two years ago, upgraded to a 10 watt laser, then a 20 watt Ray 5, and then longer came out with a B1 and I got a 33 watt B1. But they're not done, which means I'm not done either. This is the longer B140 watt laser and it's the subject of this video. I'm gonna put it through its paces and you can decide if this is one worthy of an upgrade or a new laser if you're looking for a 40 watt laser. And with that, let's get started. Hey, it's Steve, and welcome back to the shop. Now this video should be a, a bit shorter than a normal review video I would do, and that's because I've already covered the longer B1, the 33 watt laser. And if you haven't seen that review, click up in the corner here and go watch that, but then come back because once you know all of the mechanical concerns of this laser, uh, I wanna focus on this 40 watt laser module. It's actually 44 to 48 watts of power. And I'll do some standard benchmarking, of course, but I also want to compare it to some of the other 40 watt lasers I've looked at recently. And maybe I'll do a little project just to see how this laser compares to other lasers in the real world. And we'll start with the benchmarks. So I'll run my standard benchmark test here and you can see the laser working. I'm not gonna go through all of these tests in detail, but you can see there's four of them. There's a cut test, a material test, a gradient test, and then I do an image at grayscale and we'll take a look at these results and see what they look like. Now let's take a look at these results. You can see at 700 millimeters a minute, this laser is cutting still really well. At 100% power, this laser would easily cut at 900 millimeters a minute. That's pretty impressive. But what's more impressive is this square in the lower left corner, 70 millimeters a minute at just 10% power, and this laser cut this out. This is the only laser I've reviewed that can cut this square out. Moving over to the engraving, a uh, predictable result here, uh, roughly 45 degree angle up between light and dark, and uh, it, it just works the way it's supposed to. You can see the 10% line is, is dropped out a bit. Some of that's material, some of it's power. The 20% works well though. Uh, on the gradient side, pick a random number for speed and this laser seems to do it. Uh, seems best around 25,000 millimeters a minute. Now, if you're wondering what happened to the title up there, uh, I actually had the wrong title, so I re-engraved it. That's why it looks a little funny. Moving over to the image, I used those grayscale settings and I engraved this dog. Now, it's a little ragged on the sides and that's because I forgot to turn overscan on, but no big deal. Now, I did want it to be a little bit darker, uh, so I, I slowed the laser down and engraved this one and this one looks arguably a bit better somewhere in the middle is probably the right setting but i choose this this image because you can see his dark brown jacket and the darker brown floor uh, and you can still kind of make out the the edge of the uh, of the material there so all in all great results uh, with hardware store plywood that's not a bad achievement so i'm pretty happy with how this laser works so the results are in for the 40 watt longer b1 and they're predictably good i'm not surprised but if you were buying a B1 and you're on the fence between the 30 watt laser and maybe spending the extra money for the 40 watt, uh, you know, which one should you do? Well, I, I did you a favor here. I, I pulled the 30 watt uh, results from the tests. Now they aren't exactly apples to apples, but if you look at the cut test, for example, on the 30 watt at 300 millimeters a minute, you're up to 50% power before you really start cutting. By contrast, on the 40 watt, it's 30%. So definitely much more power. So if you want a cutting laser, the 40 watt might be your choice. Now on the engraving side, I didn't do a, a, a standard engraving test again. I was testing differently back then, but I did a, a gradient test. And if you look at this gradient test, and I believe I called it out in the video back then, I ran into a few problems because the gradient, the grayscale on this laser on the 30 watt wasn't as good you could see it was white and then there was almost no transition to black on the gradient and as a result when i looked at the at the dog image that i engraved there i actually dithered the image because i was having this grayscale problem so it looked like a good image but dithering is kind of cheating and that laser wasn't really as good at grayscale certainly as the 40 watts so if you want to do high high speed cutting or, or grayscale engraving, you're probably gonna to wanna to lean towards the 40 watt. Now let's compare this to some of the 40 watt lasers that I've reviewed recently. And I'll just stack them up here and I'll start with the longer B1 40 watt on the bottom and there's the cut test. Compare that to the, the Creality Falcon 2, it's virtually identical. 
and then the X-Tool S1, and you can see that one's not nearly as good at cutting. Then I'll look quickly here at the engraved test. There's the B1. You can see the Falcon 2, the engraving is not nearly so nice. And the S1 uh, isn't quite as clean either. So definitely I would call the B1 the leader in, in the engraving tests. And finally, we'll look at gradient tests here for comparison. There's the B1 uh, just for reference. By comparison, the Falcon 2 looks pretty bad and that's because you have to cut it down to half power. The X-Tool S1 is comparable to the B1. It's a $2,200 laser and the B1 is, is keeping up head to head and the B1 is actually probably a marginally better cutter. So keep that in mind. Now, all this extra power comes at a price, so you might want to hold on for a second. The longer B1 40 watt is currently on sale for $1,255. By comparison, the 33 watt version of this laser is only $950, so there's $300 difference. Now, if budget's your, your, a concern, then you might want to lean towards the 30 watt one. You know, it's, it's up to you. But if you're buying a 40 watt laser anyway, you're gonna be looking at this laser, this longer B1, and comparing it to things like the Creality Falcon 2. The Creality Falcon 2 is currently on sale for $1055, so it's $200 cheaper. And you might say, okay, why would I buy the longer B1 versus the Creality? Well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, the laser speed is better on the, on the B1. It's 36,000 millimeters a minute compared to 25,000 millimeters a minute. And the workspace is bigger. It's 450 by 440 compared to 400 by 415 millimeters. So, it's up to you. Uh, they're reasonably similar lasers, but I personally would lean towards the, the B1 in this particular case. So take that for what it is and make your choice. So that's the 40 watt version of the longer B1. It's definitely a step up from the 30 watt. Comes at a price of course, but you get better cutting, you get better engraving, and you get proper grayscale image engraving. That was a, honestly a bit of a struggle on the 30 watt laser. So, you know, if you were in the market for, for a 40 watt laser for this specific one, I'll put an affiliate link in the description down below and uh, definitely put this on your list if you want a 40 watt laser. I'll put a video up above, go watch that and uh, I'll see you over there and get out there, make your world and I'll see you next time.